Hello, person. So recently I went to Switzerland to visit CERN, the world's largest scientific research centre, and I thought I'd share with you that journey. So the trip began with me getting up at a ridiculous hour because my flight was at 7.10, and in an attempt to wake myself up, I decided to pull funny faces in the mirror. So I grabbed all my things and into the early hours of the morning we drove, or rather my dad drove, but unfortunately you can't see him because it was too dark for my camera to pick up that he actually was there. It was quite a trek from my house to Stansted, so we did need to refuel on the way. Coincidentally, this was actually the day before the fuel crisis madness started. But there was light in the tunnel near the end as I arrived at the departures entrance of the airport and met up with everyone else going on the physics trip. Finally, the sun decided to wake up before our flight. And then we boarded our flight, and I couldn't help but fear being sucked into the jet as we made our ascent up the stairs. Uh, no sooner had we sat in the plane than we arrived in Geneva. And the first thing I noticed was that the backdrop to everything in Geneva seems to be the Alps. That's a pretty awesome backdrop. I also noticed how hugely expensive things were. I had to buy some water because airport security had stolen mine and it was the most expensive water ever. This, this bottle of water, was five pound. Ah! But Geneva was pretty stunning. Not in an ooh look at me kind of way, but more like a maze of beauty that you must navigate around to find its quirky qualities. Like this bull! Or this sandwich that I bought that rivalled the surface area of my face. As you would expect from any maze, there was quite a lot of walking and it was usually uphill. But we wanted to do tourist things and tourist things is what we did. Such as discovering Switzerland's secret wine store. But we were actually looking for this place. The Saint Pierre Cathedral. Now this is something you have to visit if you are in Geneva. It's free to enter and has a warm epic atmosphere and an organ that looks like a Decepticon. <laughs> and the stained glass windows in the Chapel of the Maccabees are stunning. But there is a hidden treasure in this cathedral and it costs two Swiss francs to see and involves going to the top of the tower, which was quite a journey up the spiral staircase. That video continues for another two minutes. It's round and round and round and round. But when you do eventually get to the top, you are welcomed by this. The pure and magnificent view of Geneva with the fountain proudly dominating the vista. Also at the top of the cathedral was a model of the cathedral and one of us heard a rumor that inside that model, there's another model. And inside that model, there's another model. And inside that, our next point of call was to get up close and personal with the fountain because you can basically walk straight up to it. Now this thing is high, like 140 meters high. That's like unbelievably high. And it's like... That's how high it is. At any given moment, there's 500 liters of water in the air and it's jetting it out of the pump at 124 miles per hour which is why they really don't want you to put your hand over it. But that didn't stop us from snapping a shot that made me look like a Dragon Ball Z character. Then we headed to Baby Plage to relax and bask in the sun and have some physics banter. Also, this t-shirt is amazing. Oh, and that ice cream is delicious. I had pistachio and super chocolate, and it's... it's wow. Then we actually did something physics-y and visited Geneva's Science History Museum, where we found these funky things, a pair of parabolic mirrors. So the two of these things are about 20 meters apart from each other, and when you talk into one, the sound waves that you produce are reflected from one and then sent to the one opposite, and then they're reflected again to the focal point, so the person standing there will be able to hear your message crystal clear. Ah, uh, what do I need you for? We did have some fun with this. Uh, there was a kid standing at one end and I was standing at the other end, and I said into my mirror, Luke, I am your father. Which kind of freaked him out because he thought I was behind the mirror and he started looking for me. He was baffled by science. There are lots of other cool things in the museum park, such as lots of devices that help you tell the time using the sun. There's also this contraption, the Magdeborg Hemisphere. And this contraption is used to demonstrate atmospheric pressure. Hey, science! Right, hang on, hang on. But what I noticed in Geneva was that they have a lot of flags, like lots of flags, especially lots of flags outside the UN building. Now this just highlighted to me how Switzerland is not only a country of science, but one of international politics, and a place with freaking huge chairs. Now with all big chairs, it brought tons of photo fun, some successful, some not so successful. Eventually the sun set and it was dinner time whereby we went to a traditional Swiss restaurant which served bread and meat fondue and had the happiest musicians I've ever seen. 
and also the most multi-talented musicians I have ever seen. The guy on the left went on to play the spoons and the sword. Yeah, he can play the sword. He can make music from a sword. And he also went on to play a huge out horn. Look at that thing. It's huge. And then the president of the Physics Society had a go and he was pretty damn good at it, actually. Then they set our desserts on fire. Arson has never been so delicious. Also amazing was the tram that we took after the meal that wound through the city like a snake, making you feel like you're inside the belly of the beast. Again, more cool, stunning places, and then we arrived at our hotel to finally get some rest. In the next video, things will be getting more cerny, so get your physics caps on. And I leave you with this inspirational piece of graffiti. Happiness is only real when shared. And then the reflector to the book. Oh, look, I've got a paper cut.